Hello, uh, my name is Yamane Kaleta from Nagaoka University of Technology. Today I'm going to introduce a paper uh, unsu entitled Unsupervised Morphological Segmentation and Clustering with Document Boundaries presented at the Conference on Empirical Methods in Natural Language Processing uh, in 2009. So we'll start off with the motivation in this paper. Uh, the authors uh, were interested in uh, producing a simple method that does not require so much arbit arbitrary uh, parameter tuning. And uh, they uh, used the notion of document boundary, which was more uh, frequently used in ret uh, information retrieval in this task, to uh, constraint generation of candidate stems, affixes, and clustering of morphological variants. So this method uh, is also expected to work better for under-resourced languages uh, since uh, uh, it, doesn't, uh, it, it produced uh, uh, better results for lower data sets. So the introduction. Uh, unsupervised morphology acquisi acquisition uh, tries to um, learn the following from text. One is segmentation of words uh, and uh, grouping or clustering of these words into their related morphological variants and also generation of uh, morphology from unknown uh, words. So the approach they followed in this method in this paper is uh, first filtering affixes by uh, co-occurrence significance test and uh, then uh, finding out or uh, grouping um, candidate stems and affixes by using a document boundary knowledge. So the intuition they followed in this paper is uh, they uh, hypothesized that if words are found in, in a single document or in similar context uh, they are bound to be very similar and if they are also uh, similar in orthography then uh, these words may be related also uh, morphologically because they are, all, they are found in the same document. So they performed a statistical correlation test which is a very simple chi-square test, uh, test and they tried to find out the correlation if there is any correlation between uh, words which are found in the same document. And if these uh, words have the similar, uh, if they are uh, found in the same uh, document, they might have some kind of morphological similarity. So that's the intuition. And the languages that they experimented with are English and also a low resource uh, language uh, called Ispanteco. And the results shown uh, were better when compared to existing methods. So the main challenge in uh, unsupervised acquisition of morphology is one is a distinction between derivational and inflectional morphology. In deriv derivational uh, morphology, uh, words are derivated and they have a different part of, uh, part of speech tag from their origin. And, but in inflectional morphology are words which are only inflected for attributes or properties. Uh, so there is this distinction uh, challenge when we uh, do unsupervised acquisition of morphology. And another thing is whether uh, or what is the actual boundary of words which have similar prefixes or suffixes. So there is ambiguity in segmentation of words. These examples here given are altimeter and uh, altitude. So altitude in English is considered as a single word, but altimeter is considered as a uh, uh, as having two syllables. So there is ambiguity in segmentation. And also uh, while doing the clustering, uh, in this method they are assuming that words which are related in meaning, uh, having similar morpho morpho morphology, should be clustered in the same group. So for example, how about words which are uh, antinomous or having diff uh, opposite meaning? do you cluster them into the same group or not because they have also morphological similarity. So these are some of the challenges. So uh, while uh, uh, 
uh, um, developing the model, uh, the goal was to generate conflation sets. And but what what it means by conflation sets is words uh, uh, that are related well, through inflection or derivational morphology. So these words are called uh, conflation, uh, conflation sets, and the goal was to generate these words. So there are some steps followed for uh, generating the model. So the first one is generating candidates of uh, affixes and stems by using uh, a try, uh, suffix and prefix tries. And then after generating stems and uh, affixes, because there will be also noise generated along with the uh, normal generation step, then uh, the second step is to filter out the actual candidates for stems and uh, affixes by uh, performing a simple statistical significance of re uh, uh, correlation uh, statistics of the morphemes or the uh, affixes and uh, the stems. After that, uh, similar or uh, uh, affixes which have similar, uh, which are similar to each other, are going to be clustered. First, there will be a, a pairwise clustering and. Uh, after that, uh, these pairs are uh, again uh, clustered into a more general similar groups. And uh, finally, uh, these, the similar words are going to be clustered together and these are going to form the conflation sets or the required morphologically and, der and derivationally similar words. So if we look at these stages one by one, uh, the first one is candidate generation. So as uh, said earlier, the assumption here is that uh, words which are found in a single document uh, have some kind of morphological relatedness. So natural document boundaries would be uh, useful here to form a constraint of, uh, of separating uh, words which are really morphologically related or just orto orthographically related. So the noise here is some words which are orthographically related uh, are also going to be returned as uh, responses uh, by only doing the candidate generation step. So uh, these document boundaries will be used to, um, to separate out the words which have some kind of um, orto orthographical uh, relation but not necessarily morphologically related. And this intuition is um, observed from another paper by Yarowski in 1995 used for uh, word sense disambiguation. So as, as an example here these words assuage and assume have uh, different are different in, in meaning but if we uh, calculate a corpus wide statistics maybe uh, these words could uh, uh, hint that the prefix ASSU uh, uh, maybe they share the same prefix, though they are um, morphological, uh, they have different meaning. So, uh, what our target is, that the target in this paper is uh, to find words which are related in morphology, such as assuming, assumed, and assumes. So, uh, these words are uh, bound to be found more in a single document uh, than in uh, when considering the whole corpus. And that's how they uh, try to uh, constrain or limit the uh, morphological relatedness. So for this, they built uh, two types of tries. One is a separate try for each document. And uh, it's not, uh, the notation in this paper is uh, this CAND Gen D. So this is document-wide candidate generation and another is uh, a try for the whole corpus or the global uh, try uh, which is represented as a canned gen uh, G in this paper and also similar with word clustering which is the fourth step uh, the document wide clustering and the global clustering so as represented here uh, this is a simple try and uh, the uh, global um, uh, 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 truncus in this uh, try would be a, a this a b d this path following this path and following this path and following this path. So this would 
starting from the root, all the passes would form the global uh, elements of this set. And um, uh, the trunks uh, are uh, the uh, elements which are following the root. So starting from here, A, B would have B, D, and B. Uh, this notation is uh, uh, for empty suffixes. And uh, the branches of the trunk uh, uh, are also, uh, for example, if we, if we want to find the branch of the trunk AB, uh, as I said, these are the, the branches of this trunk. So trunks uh, represent the stems and the branches represent the suffixes. So here they use the trice to identify uh, potential stems and affixes and also collect statistics for uh, co-occurrence or correlation between morphological variants. So these uh, statistics were between affixes to group affixes and also between affixes and stems. So after uh, generating the candidate uh, affixes and stems in that way, then the next step was to filter out the uh, candidates by uh, truncating the noise or removing the noise. So in stage one there were uh, some noise generated and in this stage two uh, this noise would be uh, uh, removed by uh, calculating the statistical correlation between branches. So first pairwise comparison is made and if any of the affixes found in the candidate affix is uh, not uh, statistically significant with any of the affix in the set then it will be discarded from the affix sets. So uh, the motivation here in this paper was not to uh, do so much parameter tuning or to add any manual uh, interference while developing the model. So the only threshold that we see in this paper is the uh, chi square uh, test significance threshold which is pretty much standard. The p-value 0.05 uh, is a popular one. So this is the only threshold which we see in this paper. So next uh, is the affix clust clustering. The input for this step is the set of significantly correlated pairs of affixes after, after doing the, uh, significant, uh, the correlation tests. And uh, these uh, affix pairs uh, are going to be grouped into larger affixes to uh, find out the more general general morphological variants of the stem or the word that we are trying to find morphology uh, trying to ac ac find out the morphology. So uh, after this uh, step is the word clustering, and here they follow certain rules. Uh, so the the words or the uh, candidate should. Uh, occur on the same tree and uh, they should have uh, uh, trunks that have common stem and the affixes under the stems should be uh, mem members uh, of the valid stem cluster. So these are some of the rules they use it for word clustering. The data they have used is for two, from two languages the English set and the Spanteco. Uh, so for the English they used a large set which contains 9 million tokens and another set having 187k tokens to simulate the low resource languages. And the test set is from uh, Selex uh, data which contains inflection information. And for the Spanteco they uh, had some training documents which, are, which were uh, uh, produced for documentation of the language. So they used this uh, data and also manually tested the output of the data and uh, by using a linguist they also tested uh, how accurate the output morphology is. So uh, this is a base, the baseline graph. Um, for the baseline they simply assigned words which share uh, uh, some k characters as prefixes or uh, k characters as suffixes. So uh, by using this simple assumption, uh, this result is related to uh, Spanteco and this is for English.
So here we have precision and here we have uh, the recall. And as we can see here for English, uh, um, uh, this is 100% precision. For, so for, by using only this baseline method, the simple assumption of uh, taking first characters uh, to cluster uh, words, uh, they achieved a good score for English. But for this uh, morphologically complex language, this method was not enough. So uh, generally, when the K, the, the number of characters is small, there is high recall because uh, there, is, there will be more coverage when using uh, only few uh, characters as, uh, as input for the suffixes or the prefixes. There will be high coverage, so high recall. And uh, if the number of characters increases, then the precision also uh, increases, as we can see here. So um, this was the baseline, and the evaluation is uh, will be presented uh, separate for English and for the other language. So uh, they used these uh, calculations for recall, precision, and F-score. Um, and from this table, uh, we can see that uh, there are two sets. This is mini, uh, the, the, the smaller tests um, uh, data set, and this is the larger data set. The text is extracted from New York Times newspaper. So um, as we can see from here, uh, these are the different combinations of the generation and clustering. So can, here we have candidate generation document-wise and cluster uh, um, uh, clustering by uh, global uh, or corpus-wide clustering. So, uh, as the assumption of the paper goes, uh, we could have, we should expect high results at this line because uh, document const uh, using the document uh, boundaries or knowledge of the documents should uh, generate a better model by const by uh, reducing the noise. In, in the model. Uh, however, as we can see from this table, the, the, um, the combination of the glob global, uh, uh, the uh, corpus-wide clustering and also the document generation uh, resulted in better uh, accuracy. So uh, generally, the precision is higher for lower size. In this uh, uh, part of the table, uh, we see the highest precision here and uh, uh, the recall is higher um, uh, in here when considering only this uh, data. So when uh, the document-wide generation is used, we have high recall, and here also cluster, when document-wide clustering is used, we have high uh, precision. So somehow the uh, document uh, boundaries are, uh, have contributed to the uh, higher precision and higher coverage, but not uh, only these document constraints, but uh, when they are combined with uh, the uh, corpus-wide uh, correlation statistics also. So, as we can see from here, the new method or the proposed method also performs better than the, the previous methods, Linguistica and Morphoser, uh, when we consider uh, especially uh, precision. So for uh, Uspanteco, um, this is manually uh, tested evaluation and this is a machine tested evaluation. And here also we see similar trend. Uh, the, members, the cluster membership uh, is better when the generation of uh, when the um, candidate generation using document-wise uh, statistics is used, we have a better membership of uh, clustering, which is morphology, uh, better morphological variants are uh, formed. So in conclusion, in this method, uh, they used unsupervised morphology to, uh, unsupervised method to, uh, for acquisition of morphology. And, uh, the intuition in this method was uh, using document boundaries and simple correlation tests for filtering stems and affixes. So this method is uh, promising uh, for under-resourced languages because it performed better for uh, lower size of data. 
and uh, as the discussion I uh, written in the discussion uh, when the data size is increased the model uh, performs uh, worse than the uh, when the uh, data is uh, when the data size is low and um, the results also show that uh, this method has performed better than the existing methods and in the future they uh, propose to uh, build more complex models by using textual, textual uh, distance to estimate likelihood of morphological relatedness. Thank you.